Hey guys, if you've seen any of my previous videos and you've seen this amazing footage of animals visiting my solar fountain, a lot of people in the comments ask me how I got it. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to adapt a wireless security camera so that you can see what animals visit your solar fountain or for use in any other outdoor security needs. Without any delay, let's get started. In front of me, I have all the materials that we're going to need. We'll need to start with a waterproof box of some kind. I chose this one that I found at Amazon. And I will leave a link in the description for all the stuff that I used, so you can buy it for yourself. But uh, we'll start with this waterproof box. As you can see, it has a gasket in there to keep the water out. Then you'll need the most important piece, the security camera, which I bought a Zmodo 1080p Wi-Fi security camera. Got the little antenna here. And then you'll need wire. So I'm using speaker wire, which I bought off of Amazon. And then we'll need a power supply. This is a universal 12 volt power supply, also available on Amazon. And uh, the last little things you'll need that you might find laying around your house would be a USB-A to USB micro cable, uh, a 12 volt to USB adapter. This one's from a car. And I also am using this socket that is left over from a uh, car splitter. And that's just going to adapt our 12 volt adapter from the speaker wire. If you don't have one of these laying around like I did, you can actually buy the exact same thing on Amazon. This is a 12 volt to USB micro adapter. But since I've been using this in the past, I'm just going to keep using it and save this for another project. Okay. So now that you've seen the materials, I'm going to get into building it and uh, you can follow along. All right, for, so the first step, we're going to uh, go ahead and uh, get our camera ready. We're gonna mount it to the top of our waterproof box here. And uh, you could do this any way that you want to. I wouldn't recommend using the screws because I don't want to punch through the waterproof plastic and you know make it not waterproof anymore. So what I'm gonna do is use hot glue. And so I'm gonna take the little camera mounting pad here and uh, I got a hot glue gun, and we're just gonna go ahead and hot glue it right to the top of our box. Get a couple good beads on the edge there, and we're just gonna stick it right there. While that's uh, curing, we got the little mount holder here. Screw it onto our camera. Cool, there's your little security camera. This is now cooled and it's literally just going to pop right on the top of the, of the box like that. For the bottom of our box here, I'm going to punch a hole through one of these uh, little rubber gaskets here. I'm going to try using this screw just to make the hole as small as possible so that uh, there's less to fill in whenever we are trying to actually make it waterproof. Okay, I'm going to try to jam the end from the camera through. There we go. So now we got the end of our camera cable inside our waterproof box here. We're going to take our USB micro to USB A cable, attach it to the camera cable like so. I'm going to wrap this up, get it all in the box here. And then we are going to take our little socket with five volt adapter, plug it in, jam this in the box. Now we're gonna take our, uh, our speaker wire. You may need more or less than this, but uh, this should be plenty for my uses. But uh, separate your positive and negative cable, use the wire stripper to strip back some of the contacts like so uh, on this I've marked this is the positive and this one's the negative so we go ahead and take that off and I'm going to use this shrink tubing to make the final connection mm -hmm. that on there and this on there okay and we're going to go into the same hole that we punched for the for the camera 
so that there's only one hole to re-waterproof. So connect the positive to the positive again. Now, if you all notice, there's no soldering required. If you don't have the shrink tubing, you could use wire nuts instead. This is just kind of what I had around the house and I figured I would use it. And now we have our heat gun here and I'm just gonna go ahead and heat these. And there we go. Make sure it doesn't start a fire. Okay, so we have everything connected in here. As you can see, that was extremely easy. Nothing too crazy. So now that all of our components are attached inside, we are just going to place the lid of the box back on, like so. And we can even push in some of the excess cable here, make it a little prettier. And uh, then we'll reattach the top screws here. Okay. And uh, there, that's pretty much it for the outdoor portion of the uh, unit. And as you can see, there's just the one hole in the box that we're going to put, uh, you can put some silicone in there just to make sure it's waterproof or maybe wrap it with electric tape or something. Remember, it's not going to be submerged in water. It's just going, you know, the rain or whatever will just splash it. But uh, definitely try to make it as waterproof as possible. But this looks really good. It's really sturdy and a nice stable base for the camera. Once we get outside, we're going to lay out our cable all the way back to a power source. And at the power source, we're going to plug in our little 12 volt power supply here. And uh, I will show you outside also, but just in case it's not clear, all I'm gonna be doing is plugging this end into the wall, and then it comes with this little uh, wire adapter here, plug it into that, and uh, there's a positive and a negative. If we remember, we plugged our positive into this wire that has the black stripe on it, and our negative is the one without the stripe, so we're just gonna run our cable to where it needs to go. And then when we find the end of it, we're going to cut it and just attach it right into the end of this, plug it into the wall. And I mean, that's, that's it. You got a powered up camera, you're ready to go. So let's uh, cut to me outside installing it. And, uh, and yeah, we'll go from there. All right guys, as you can see, we're outside. And uh, I'm by the little solar fountain here. I've started, I've gone ahead and placed my uh, camera where I want it to go. And I'm gonna start running the wire back to the house. So uh, let's get started on that. Now that I got the cable run across the yard, I got the other end of it. We're gonna make our final connection to our uh, power supply. And uh, you can see I'm using the plug that's under my easement there. It just happens to be the closest plug to uh, where we're going. Okay, so we're gonna use the wire stripper. Strip a little bit off the end of each one. Just need our screwdriver here. And we got our little adapter. So we're gonna loosen the screws on this. And then we will just attach the positive to the positive and the negative to the negative. Pretty easy there. One end is in. And now the next end. Okay, so that's attached. And now up here on our plug, all we gotta do Okay, got power run. Okay, so we got the power run. We got the uh, cameras already set up and recording. 
Our last thing to do to finish up this project is just to dig a very shallow trench to bury the uh, power cable in. Uh, that way I don't hit it with the lawnmower or the weed whacker or anything like that. So uh, now we're gonna do that and then we'll uh, be done with this project. And that's how you install it through movie magic. It's still here inside, but I'm just gonna tell you a few of my uh, recommendations and precautions and things about having the camera outside placement and such. So my first recommendation is uh, actually give it a little space from, if you're gonna put it at a solar fountain like I did, the birds actually splash a lot of water. And on my old camera, it was getting a lot of uh, you know, hard water stains and build up because the birds would splash the water onto the lens. And so uh, you might want to give it a little space back so that it doesn't get totally messed up by, by water splashing on it. Other precautions, as you can see in my videos, I have the camera pointed towards my house and not towards like the road or anything. And that's just so that the security alerts aren't set off by cars passing by or people walking by. It's just set off by animals visiting the fountain. And that'll help you find good footage uh, without having to like search for it. The, uh, the AI in the camera will be able to tag, you know, actual animals for you and not just cars driving by. Another big precaution before you go through all the trouble that I just did is to just run an extension cord out with the camera to where you're planning to set it up and make sure that the Wi-Fi signal is actually strong. Uh, you don't want to go through all of this and then realize that your Wi-Fi is not strong enough to actually run the camera out there. So that's a that's a big uh, you know thing to test first using an extension cord. This kind of camera setup could actually be used for a lot of uses outdoors. You could use it as a, another angle on your security camera system, one pointing towards your house. You could use it to monitor I don't know, your dogs in their dog house. I'm using it for birds at a fountain. I mean, you could use it for almost anything, anywhere you need a camera outdoors. That's all I have for you in this video. I've had this solar fountain set up for about two years now, and this is a new updated camera, so I can't wait to see what kind of cool videos I can get. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll be sure to post uh, the highlights from this new camera and we'll hopefully see some really cool animals stop by. Thanks for watching guys, I'll see you on the next one. Bye.